Welcome to the Math Ed Podcast. I'm Zandra DiRaggio from the University of Missouri, and this is a special episode. Today, we're flipping things. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking a bit of a break from all the Math Ed research, and we're going to talk about a children's book. So here with me today is my friend, the author of the book, and my frequent collaborator, Sam Otten. Sam, hi. Hey, Zandra. Thanks so much for doing this. This is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I've been hearing about this book since you uh, started dreaming it up years ago. (laughs) Yeah, you knew about it when it was kind of an idea floating around. It's also funny that you called me an author because in the eyes of some of my family and like out of university friends, this is like the first time that I'm really an author because this is a a book for like regular people. (laughs) Yeah, I can totally see that. Um, You do have an Amazon author page, so I feel like you're legit now. (laughs) Um, So the first question I have for you is you're in math, obviously math education and not in literacy. So where in the world did an idea for a children's letter book come from? It's an alphabet book for sure, Um, but I wanted to do a different sort of type of alphabet book. So if people are familiar with alphabet books, I mean, everybody basically is. It's always A is for apple, B is for bear, C is for this, D is for that. And it's like the genre of alphabet books is just almost defined that way. It's like it's the letter is for the word, and it means you have to start each word with that letter. And so I had this idea while just playing with my kids to, to show the importance of the letters in a different way. And it actually does connect to like some stuff that we've done in math ed, Zandra, like where we talk about like, you can't just focus on examples, you have to talk about non examples. Mm -hmm. Or in math, if you really want to understand a concept, you can't just look at the instances of that concept, you actually sometimes have to take it away and see like what falls apart or what changes when you remove the thing. All that kind of educational background was sort of rolling around somewhere. But the actual idea came from just being in the kitchen with my kids. Um, I've got four kids now, but it was my two older kids. And they play with Legos a lot. And I just made this dad joke. I just said, like, you know, without the O, those Legos are just legs. <laughs> and then we kind of grabbed some long ones and we kind of walked them around, like, with this awkward, like, Lego legs. And they thought this was, like, really funny. And they had never thought about the word Lego being similar to the word leg. And basically, in that kitchen, as soon as I got a laugh, like, from the kids, I was like, I could do this with all the letters. Like I could take take the letters away. So yeah, it's called Missing Letters, an alphabet book. And instead of starting each word with the letter, what you do is you, for each letter, you take a word and you remove that letter and it transforms. And like that's how you kind of like show the importance of each letter is by things changing when you take them out. Mm-hmm. So uh, this makes a lot of sense to me working with you on various math things because you definitely attend to structures mathematically and try to incorporate, you know, what looks the same from one equation to a next. And that takes a lot of this kind of thinking. You're also a musician. Mm-hmm. So I imagine you look for structure in music as well. So I feel like this is very well connected for you. Yeah. And I try to be funny sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this was fun, like to workshop the humor and like, you know, to really like try out different words and be like, is this funny if we take this away? You know, <laughs> and I was doing that for like a couple of years, you know. Yeah, I think it's very funny. And we'll get to some specific examples that I chuckled at quite a lot. Um, but first, so this is an illustrated book and there's beautiful and funny illustrations throughout the book. So tell me, how did you come to think about illustrating a book and work with the illustrator, Leon Thomas? Yeah, Leon Thomas uh, is a graduate now of the University of Missouri. So we met at Mizzou. Um, and actually, Zandra, you were there like when we met. So Zandra and I were wanting some illustrations of like our math teaching ideas. And Leon applied to like possibly supply some of those illustrations and animations. We didn't actually hire Leon, (laughs) which was our, that was our mistake um, because he's awesome. It was his freshman year. So it's kind of, you know, but we met Leon. We actually really liked Leon's style. We shared, I mean, you remember like some of the drawings with the cute Mm -hmm. rabbit and stuff that we would share. So we had a good interaction. And then a year or two later, I you know, was putting together this idea for a book and needed an illustrator. And I just remembered some of those drawings from Leon. And I'm like, that style of character is exactly what I would want. Like, I think it would really work with this. So I just contacted Leon again and said, hey, remember me? Like, I have this idea. We met here on campus. I st- I kind of pitched a few of the word combinations and Leon got it right away. Like, Leon's like, oh, I see. I see how this works. And then, 
it was really a collaboration from then on. Um, he came up with a lot of the ideas in the book, um, or I would bring a word, but I wasn't really sure how to do it visually. And then Leanna would be like, I got a visual for that. And it's just like the illustrations are like surpassed, like what I was hoping for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're really beautiful. And also just so stinking cute. I love them. <laughs> I'm wondering if you know, or could guess what my favorite page of this book is. Oh, that's interesting. There's wind becomes win. It's like if you don't have the D, the wind, because there's kind of this like come from behind story. I don't know if that's maybe one of your favorite ones. It is a favorite, <laughs> but it's not my favorite. So I love all things dogs and puppets. And oh, uh, oh my gosh. Yes. Is it really puppy puppet? Yes, puppy puppet. And without the <laughs> P, <laughs> without the P becomes wit. <laughs> yeah, so there, I have actually kind of a story to that one. So, yeah. you know, most of these are kind of like we start out with like nouns, you know, like so acorn without the A becomes corn and block without B becomes lock. So we wanted to start with nouns where we take away the first letter and then we start taking away letters from other parts of words and we start having things that aren't even nouns. Like we have things that are just uh, adjectives and verbs and stuff. But Leon and I, like we knew that we wanted to have a gibberish one because we want, again, this is kind of like the educator in me saying, I need to make the point that sometimes if you take a letter away, you've ruined the whole word. There's nothing left. So like, I didn't want kids to think you can always take a letter away and have a perfectly good word. So we knew we wanted to have a gibberish one and we knew it needed to be like later in the alphabet because you don't want to start out the gate with a gibberish one. Uh, And I also knew that kids like gibberish words. We have a colleague, Corey Webel. And a couple years ago during a holiday party, we had Scrabble like Bananagram or Scrabble letters out. And I had fun with the kids by just putting letters together and then trying to pronounce them. And it would just be like, you know, and the, this table of kids were all just laughing every time. So I knew that it could work to have a gibberish word. And we originally had underground, if you take away the U, becomes de grand, kind of a German sounding word. But actually, in our like final revisions before it went to press, we decided that Nuttergrand wasn't quite doing it. And so we went to this one of doing Puppy Puppet. So that was literally the last page that Leon drew was Puppy Puppet. And you take away the P and it obliterates it. And it just becomes Uyuit. Just this weird <laughs> sound like Uyuit. So <laughs> I just think it's so cute and so funny. I want to hear your kids saying Uyuit. Yeah. And also the illustration is just wonderful. It's a puppet marionette type dog with a ball of dog food. It's adorable. Yeah. And I said that, you know, we could just take the colors of the puppy and make them into question marks. Like, I don't know what this is. It's it's confusing. But Leon had the brilliant idea of leaving the dog food still just sitting there. <laughs> that So that those are like the kind of touches that Leon puts in that are just really bring it to life. Yeah, it's really fun. It's like I get more out of it every time I read it. And also when you tell me about it, it's even more fun to, to learn about. Uh, so were there some letters that were harder than others to come up with? Yeah. So um, some of them I had like from the beginning, like fall becomes all and just this picture of all the leaves falling is kind of fitting for this time of year. And farm becomes far was a really early one because I imagined this farm and all of a sudden it's like way off in the distance and I grew up on a farm. So I kind of like that one. So some of those were there from the start, but there were a couple that were pretty hard. Like Q is a tricky one because Q and U kind of like really go together. And so it's like I'm trying to do these missing letters of having the Q disappear But it's weird because it still leaves the U there. So I consulted with some of our friends here who are literacy experts and kind of like figured out a way to approach this. And we approached it through sound. So we actually ended up for Q doing quilt. And so quilt, if you focus on spelling, you're just left with U-I-L-T, which isn't really anything. But if you focus on the sound, and especially with like preschool kids, like this is how they're interacting with language is they're listening to it. Uh Quilt. If you take away that k- at the beginning, you have wilt yeah. in sound. So that's how we did it. Um, and we phrase it differently for that one. We say without Q, quilt sounds like wilt. Nice. And then we have this quilt with like nice plants and foliage on the quilt um, pattern. And it all just wilts and like gets gray and starts like sagging down. So that's what we did for that one. The other one that was like the challenge, and this was like months in the making, was... Yeah. I had an idea of I wanted to do the same word, but that you take away a different letter each time and it makes different new Uh words. So 
I kind of wanted to have this point like of, you know, there's not just one letter you take away, you might take away a different letter. But I felt like to have it work in the pacing of the book, I thought they had to be simultaneous letters in the alphabet Mm -hmm. so that you could see the word, take something away, see the same word again, and then take something different away. So I had to go on this hunt for months for a word that is like makes sense to young kids that could be illustrated. And it has to have consecutive alphabetical letters that when you remove them, it still makes a word that makes sense to young kids and can be illustrated. So this was, this was like quite the hunt. I finally found one when I was driving in Michigan near Grand Rapids. I was going to visit my brother, who's a Mizzou grad, Mr. Otten. <laughs> and, uh, I noticed a sign for Boost Mobile. And all of a sudden it just clicked. Boost has exactly what I'm looking for. Boost is a word that kids know. Yeah. And it has an S and a T right next to each other. So in the book, then we had it like, and I took it to Leon and Leon nailed it. So we have these kids, one's boosting the other up into a tree. So that's the start of boost. First, you take away the S and it becomes boot. Uh-huh. So now all of a sudden they've like are transported into a shoe store and he's getting a boot on his foot for some reason. And then you start the same word again. You're back to the tree. You're doing the boost into the tree. And this time the T goes missing. And it becomes booze, like boo, like I'm scaring you. So then you have these kids that are scaring them from the tree. And those kids are actually modeled on my own kids. And so they know that. So they always go to that page and they look at themselves in the illustration. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. That's a great story for zoning out and conceptualizing. (laughs) I guess you're never really zoning out. You're always thinking. I am going to ask what your favorite one is. Now, my guess would be the one that made it on the cover. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. The cover image is what we call banana lamb. And it's this yellow sheep that's pretty cute, like coming out of a banana peel. Um, It is definitely one of my favorites. It might be my favorite. When I took home sketches, like Leon would do sketches and I'd show them to my wife. Chelsea immediately loved this one like the most, this banana lamb. So the word is banana. But if you take away the N, it just becomes ba. And so the ba is the now the sheep emerging from the banana peel. But Leon's drawing is really what does it. Like, it's amazing. And Leon even put, like, the little fluffy tail, like, at the end of the banana, those little touches. Mm -hmm. But Leon and I actually did not, like, design the cover. So we just sent in, you know, like, the illustrations to the publisher, which is Olympia Publishers. They just said, like, write down a little blurb about the cover. And all we said about the cover was that we wanted, like, the concept of the book to be sort of, like, suggested by the cover. But then we want it to just be, you know, look look friendly for kids and, you know, that sort of thing. And it was actually Olympia on their own that said, we like this banana lamb. We're putting it right on the cover as like the feature image. So that was really there. They kind of agreed that that's kind of a standout character. Yeah, I agree, too. It's a great looking lamb and it's very cute. So I know that this is a fun book for all ages. I'm 39 and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, (laughs) But what kind of is your vision for how uh, teachers or parents might use this book with their children? Yeah, so I think I've I've witnessed kids from two to seven, like really kind of getting into it and having fun like throughout this whole book. So it can really be for like pre-readers and preschool, and it can also be for like K through three. And we did that on purpose. So like I was talking earlier about the sound versus the spelling. So for almost the entire book, I tried to make sure that the words functioned in terms of the way that it sounds and also functioned in terms of the way that it spells. So like, for example, bear, like you might want to say, Oh, bear. If you take away the B, then like an adult will say you have ear, Mm -hmm. but a kid, if you take away, if you have bear and you take away the B, a kid will say air. Like you're left with air, right? So that's one that we would not put in the book because you have a conflict between people listening to it and people looking at the spelling. So in the book, I always made sure, uh, except for like the quilt wilt where we kind of had to go to the, but through the vast majority of the book, I'm trying to have it work for those three-year-olds when they're listening to it and looking at the pictures. And I'm also trying to have it work for those seven-year-olds that are really looking at the spelling and seeing how that spelling changed. For teachers and parents, I would hope that they play this game with their kids. And just look for other words that you can take away letters and make a new word. Like look around and see a wall and be like, oh, wall could become all. You start to just um, notice words around you and then think about those sounds being removed. And we do now, uh, my wife helped me. We've actually made several worksheets that are just free for teachers. So if you go to missinglettersbook.com, any teacher can just download some fun little activities where kids get to kind of connect up words with missing letters or make words that have missing letters and 
find them out or look at a picture and figure out what are the words that are sort of like hidden in this picture. So uh, we want to share those just to give a little fun letter game for kids. Nice. So my husband and I were reading the book and then we were playing games. So we came up with a couple uh, inspired by your book for you to try. Okay. Uh, So if you were starting with the word wield, Mm -hmm. what letter would you remove? (laughs) You could make weld. And this, that could actually be an illustration. So like you could have somebody wielding a sword and then all of a sudden it's like pulled down into a welding, you know, and a helmet drops over their eyes and they're welding all of a sudden. <laughs> nice. Okay. What about if we were going to go the other war- way and we're going to undo since we're math people, uh, mm-hmm. what letter would you add to tone? So toner tones uh, don't feel that exciting. Like I didn't do any plurals. Like to me, that felt lame to take an S off and then make it singular. I'm like, okay, everybody knows that. For this one, I would maybe go to the S on the other end and do stone, like Mm -hmm. tone becomes stone. And I would maybe pitch to Leon, like somebody singing and like the notes are kind of coming out. And then in the next image, they have turned to stone and they're like crashing down around the choir or something like that. It could be kind of dramatic. I love that you're always thinking of the illustrations to go. I usually try to come up with a few options and like put them to Leon and then Leon will kind of like be able to tell which one's going to work the best. (laughs) All right. And now this one is a missing number for you. So I'm going to give you a number and let's see if you would take out a particular number to make a more interesting number. So the number is 910,927. (laughs) <laughs> you know me quite well, I think, Sandra <laughs> DeRajo. So I would take out the number nine and it makes my birthday, which is 1027. Ah, good. You fell and, for it. <laughs> and I'm known, I'm known around the office and around my house as always pointing out my birthday on clocks. And uh, <laughs> I always remember it because of that. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, for me, I have fun with these. I'm glad you and Dan have had fun. You've submitted some like words to the website and stuff. If other people have fun, just coming up with your own words or coming up with like, what's the picture that could really like make this come alive. I'd actually love to see pictures from kids. So we're doing a contest and giveaway that's going till January 15th. So again, if, if uh, people go to missinglettersbook.com, there's a contest where we want, uh, we have a little form where kids can find their own words and then draw their own picture. Like here's my drawing of the tone becoming stone or whatever they want to do. If they submit that in, they could get featured on the website or on our YouTube video. And then uh, I'm going to give them like a free signed book that I'll just send to them that they can have to keep. So I'm hoping to just see the kids' creativity of the drawings that they might come up with. That's awesome. I have a niece that's quite the artist and I'm sending her this book. So I'm going to encourage her to enter at missinglettersbook.com. All right. So um, I'm assuming we can get copies of the book from there, but where else can we buy this book if you want a copy? Yeah. So Olympia Publishers is our great publisher that we've been working with. Um, So it's available there. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. But um, if people have local bookshops, I would actually encourage you to to look up the book at at IndieBound. Or if you go to our website, you can get linked to IndieBound. But our book is on IndieBound, and then that will allow you to link it up to a local bookshop. And then that local bookshop can actually bring it in for you. Um, And so it gives them a little bit of business as well. But yeah, it's available at all those places, whatever is most convenient for people. Great. Well, thanks so much. This has been really fun. And thanks for creating such a fun little book. I can't wait to read it with my nieces. Thanks for talking with me about it. Yeah. And have a good Thanksgiving. You too.